morning, Phoebe. Good morning. Good morning. It's Saturday. And can you tell I had a much better night's sleep last night? We decided to give the sofa bed a miss last night and just sleep in our room, even though the plaster's still wet. And uh, it was a good decision. It was really, it was absolutely fine and comfortable. Plaster doesn't um, smell. It felt a little bit cold, but we were wrapped up warm. And it's going off really well today. We've opened up all the windows. Um, yeah, it's looking good. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you how that's drying later. Someone asked me why plaster, the plaster is brown. I don't, I don't know the answer to that, because it is. <laughs> <laughs> is it a different colour in other countries? It's brown here and when it dries it'll be a kind of salmon pink which I shall show you when I film it later. So today the girls have got their drama club, drama school, which is currently on Zoom so they're both in different rooms at the moment um, doing that and whilst they do that I tend to catch up on housework and things and obviously I've got quite a lot to catch up on because it's been a crazy week of plastering and birthdays. So I'm just doing the washing up and I'm going to give the kitchen and the dining room a really good dust and a really good clean and wipe over and then I've got to do a bit of meal planning, work out what we're going to have this weekend in the week and for Easter Sunday next week. Can you believe it? By this time next week, March vlogs will be over. I'm also going to sew together the uh, Amagurumi Jester that I'm making for Lilia's 15th birthday which is on Wednesday. So I'm going to show you how I do a bit of that because I had quite a few requests for a bit of an amigurumi tutorial. Now it's not really a tutorial but I will show you how I'm going to sew one piece to another piece. And I might put timestamps up so that if you're not really interested in amigurumi tutorials you can skip to after that. Saturday night means Anton Dick's Saturday night takeaway um, which is always good fun. We will sit down and watch that as a family. Yeah, so hopefully a nice productive day with a bit of time to sit down and do a bit of crafting or drawing or something creative as well. I thought I'd tell you about my two little plants on the windowsill. Um, because I'm not really a plant person indoors. We have to be quite careful because Lilia um, is a very sneezy, allergic person and, and she does react to quite a lot of um, flowery things. Cactuses are okay though. And I wouldn't have ordinarily, deliberately had cactus sitting on my, uh, on my windowsill, but the reason, I, they've both got a story behind them. So this one started off like probably like half to a third of the size and uh, it was a gift uh, at my best friend Claire when she was pregnant with her little girl who is now three she had a baby shower and we all got one of these and it had a little tag that said grow with me so I've kept it ever since got a little it's still in its same little pot but it's grown quite a lot so that reminds me of that when my uh, best friend had her first baby and then this one here um, started off life it's in this gorgeous little ceramic, miniature ceramic pot and I bought it at a market in Greenwich, there was like a crafty artisan market in Greenwich in January 2018. We'd gone just for an outing before the schools went back after Christmas and it was tiny, it was just a tiny little thing, almost like the little thing that's there now that's sprouted up. But it's grown quite significantly. I need to get a, a different dish for it. This is just a little pin dish that I used to use for tea bags. I want to get a little white dish. I don't like the brown with the green. So I'm always on the lookout for the perfect little flat white dish, but I haven't found it yet. Might have a look on eBay. And I, the reason I've always kept it is because that was the day that I, we were halfway round, wandering around Greenwich when we got the call from my stepmom to say that my dad had been taken into hospital um, and he he died that year of brain cancer and it was the first signs uh, that day that he had a tumour in his brain. Um, yeah, so it kind of reminds me of my dad in a bittersweet way. 
yeah, to see how it's grown since that time. So that's the story of my two cactus. tell you a little bit about my bird bin because you might not have seen the vlog where we did this. Uh, I can't remember which vlog it was. I shall try and I don't know it might have been Vlogtober or something on my other channel but we bought this uh, bread bin from Amazon. If I can find which one it was I shall link it underneath and with the view to doing something that I had wanted to do for a long time. We don't keep bread in it. Um, I fitted, oh no, it's fallen down. That's gorilla tape up there. I need to put more gorilla tape on. Oh, sorry about that noise. That's Dan putting stuff in the recycling. Um, and I put in here a extension lead. It's got three plugs and about six USBs on there. So this is our charging station. I've got my um, little thing that we use to charge the Apple Watch is all set up here. I've got extra plugs. This is a um, Bluetooth speaker that's there. Been, it's been charging Phoebe's little phone that she uses to message her friends. I've got all the charging cables and our super fast one that I got with my new iPhone. And it all goes in there. Ta-da! <laughs> So I don't have to look at it. Until we did that, um, I had to look at it all the time. And we drilled, Dan got a special little saw thing. Mm, that's another little Bluetooth speaker. We've got them everywhere. And he sawed a hole in the back so that the wire for the extension could come through, which I then gorilla taped to the top. But just now it has fallen down. It's been like that for about, it's been you know solid for about two months. So... I'm going to have to redo that, not a problem. And then above where it plugs in, there is a little plug here. So I've got my plant covering it all because it's ugly. And that's the doorbell as well. And then this is just a thing that Dan brought with him when we, got, when we first moved in together. It's a recipe box. And he likes it, so that's where it goes. And it's much neater than looking at a ton of wires. casserole but I have no recipe I'm not really one for making up casseroles but I've made a few in my time so I reckon I've got a little bit of knowledge to help me on my way oh that's the door opening if you can hear that Dan took the girls out to get McDonald's for their lunch they had their last um, drama school um, zoom today then they'll have two weeks off for Easter and then, yeah. <laughs> and then when they go back, it'll be face to face. So he's treated them to McDonald's for their uh, a late lunch. And a late lunch means it's quite a good time to experiment because if nobody's really keen on this, it won't really matter because they'll be, they will, will have had something good, uh, a nice filling lunch. I wouldn't say something good. Phoebe gets a fillet of fish. Lilia always gets a cheeseburger but always takes the pickle out. Why would she take the pickle out? It's the best bit. It makes me feel sick. Um, yeah, so I don't really know what I'm doing. If you're in the UK, um, 
and you shop in Asda, you'll probably be familiar with the Asda magazine, which I always grab as soon as there's a new one. I love the Asda magazine. It's basically just the supermarket magazine stuff they're doing. And there's always loads of recipes and the recipes are always really good. I've got so many cut out in my recipe file that I use time and time again, especially like baking recipes. Anyway, they have this feature on meal maths, uh, casseroles. So basically they give you um, columns, so you choose your um, your base, your protein, your veg, um, your pulses and your liquid. So I'm going to use this as a base for putting together my ingredients and we're going to use um, the Asda Meat Free Meatballs to do this. So I'm going to make a kind of meatball, vegetable and potato casserole. I'm not going to show you what I do, um, but if it works out well, I'll write it down um, to share with you in a future vlog. So I'm going to crack on and get on with that. So the casserole, my made up casserole, is uh, bubbling away. It's looking really good, so fingers crossed Dan and I will definitely like it. Um, but whether or not the girls will, who knows. So I'm gonna have a bath because, because I can, everything, well, not everything. Um, these, all these bits that you can see piled up here, and there's a load of stuff all along there, including my yarn swift, it, th that's not usually in here. Um, but there's enough room now to have a bath. I need to go and get the, I washed the bath mat, which is why it's not there. Can you see here? I won't say the name of the company. But um, look at that. This is, that happened within about a week of fitting it and they refused to give us our money back. Isn't that bad? So anyway, I kept it like that because I just knew we had a few other renovations going on. I'll sort it out. I'll get a new one from somewhere else. Should we go and have a look at the bedroom? Oh my goodness, it's really cold when you open the door in here. Um, we have had the, that door open, it must have slammed um, shut because we've got all the windows open in here so I'll just I'll put something in front of it. It all feels cold and damp in here but the windows are open. We've got a little mini heater that we've had on low on and off throughout the day just to not let it get too cold in here and if you can see, we well, can see behind me, the walls are going pink. It's probably not going to look very pink on the screen, probably just beige. So the dark bits are where it's still drying and the lighter bits, salmony pink bits, are where it is dried and it's gone off. So you can see it's really doing well. The, the, the wall that's the outside wall, which is this one, um, is obviously taking the longest because that's the coldest wall and the radiator is off of the wall at the moment, although we're, we're actually getting a new radiator. So that's how it's all looking. Now I am doing a bedroom renovation vlog, I might do it over a couple of vlogs, so you'll be able to see the whole story of the bedroom from beginning to end. Uh, but the wardrobes won't be fitted until towards the end of um, April, because uh, they're very, very busy at the moment. As you can imagine, I think everyone's doing the same thing we are, and going, oh, we've spent a lot of time in our houses this year. Oh, I wondered what, there's always something hanging on here. That's Dan's hoodie. Right, I'm going to show you my little Amagamumi tutorial now. Now, if you're not interested... <laughs> if you're not interested in Amagurumi, then I'm going to put the timestamp, the rough timestamp on the screen for you to jump forward to so you can skip it. Because I think it's about eight or nine minutes. I've just done it. Um, so if you're not interested in that kind of thing, you can skip to the end and see the, the last bit of the vlog. And whilst I'm showing you that, I'm going to go and run a bath. A few people, right at the beginning of March vlogs, when I said, is there anything you want to see, asked for an Amagurumi tutorial. Now, I haven't got a lot other than this going on at the moment, and I'm about to sew it together. So I've made all the parts. I've got my little jester here, which is this guy and he's all finished isn't he cute and I'm gonna sew his hat on so here's his little jester hat I might have to move my tripod because I think it needs to be higher up so I'll do that in a minute and I've also got his 
teeny teeny little arms <laughs> here they are so I need to sew these on as well so I thought as soon as I've got to do it I'll show you how I do it I don't believe there's really a right or wrong way but I've been doing amigurumi for a little while so I'll just show you what I te the techniques that I use see how it works out it doesn't always work out perfectly for me even though I've been doing it for a while so let's see what happens so the first thing I'm going to do is position the hat and I always use the picture as reference um, so I can sort of see where it is. Now in the picture as you can see it is at a bit of a jaunty angle but I've already got this guy's hair at a bit of a jaunty angle to counteract the fact that I put his eyes on a bit wonky. Um, so I'm going to position it how I want it and how I think it looks best. So once I've got it into position I'm going to use the bell, these type of bell pins. Are they called bell pins? Bell markers? These ones. And I'm going to use those just to sort of anchor it into position. Now it won't hold it firmly, but it will help me to identify the positioning of it as I sew around. So I'm just going to pick up a stitch in the hair very gently and pick up the stitch that I know I want to correspond. Hope you can see this, like that. So I've just gone through a stitch on the hair and through a stitch on the hat where I know I want that to sit. Now it doesn't hold, like I say, it doesn't hold it right together. It just gives you an indication of where you want it. Um, another way to do this is to use just pins and instead of using um, stitch markers, you would pin it like this. Just go straight through. So you just go straight through. And again, that's not going to hold it terribly firmly because once you start sewing, it is going to lift. Um, but it just helps you to get it into position before you start sewing. So I might do a combination of both. And you don't want to just go round one after the other. Da, 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 da. You kind of want to almost pin out the four, I know it's a circle, but like the four corners. So I know where I want the back to go, for example, and I know where I want the sides to go. And then everything else, you should hopefully be able to position as you go. It's quite stretchy. So if I want to stretch it a bit further, then it looks like it's going to naturally go. I can do that. And it'll probably change again a little bit as I put my stitches in. I'm actually finding the pins a bit easier to get it into position, so I'm just going to stick to the pins. There we go. I've got the hat in position. And I can now have a good look around him. See how he's going to look when he's standing up. See how it looks at the front. I wonder if it could come forward a bit, actually. Yeah, actually, I'm going to bring the whole thing forward a bit. So I'm going to take all those pins out <laughs> and I'm going to bring it forward a bit. But I'd rather do that with pins than stitch it on and have to unpick the stitches and start again. There we go. I think I'm a bit happier with that positioning. It's a bit further forward on his head and even jauntier than before. So now I'm gonna start sewing it to the head. So I've got my yarn here, um, got a really nice long bit, probably longer than I need, but I don't wanna run out, cause that would be a pain. And I'm gonna start at the back, and I'm gonna choose a stitch from the hair that's gonna not be seen. Um, so it's right underneath where the hat will be. You can hear next door's dog having its morning freak out in the garden. So there you go, I'm just going to secure that on a stitch that's going to be underneath the hat. And I'm going to tuck that yarn end in there. In fact, I might just cut a bit off of it and tuck the shorter end right under, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, below that knot that I've made, is I'm going to just um, go through a couple of the vertical stitches on the hair, 
pull my yarn through. It always feels a bit awkward starting off, but then you get into a nice rhythm with it. And then I'm going to pick up, I've actually got a line, so I've got um, some top stitching here, and then there's some little yellow poking through here. And I'm going to pick up and go through the yellow loop to match the yarn that I'm sewing with. And then I'm going to go back down through the yellow loop next along, like that. Then I'm going to go to the next couple of vertical stitches along the hair, keeping an eye on where I want this position. So sometimes I might want to go on the same row, sometimes I want to move up a row, which I'm going to do. Give it a good tug and see how that's sitting, because I don't want any stitches pulling. Now, can you see how those yellow stitches are pulling? That's Phoebe coming in to get her breakfast by me. I don't like that, so I'm going to change how I'm doing it. Okay, I've found my method now. So what I'm going to do is continue along picking up the hair stitches, but I'm going up. Let me show you. Let me take this pin out. So I've just come down. So I'm going to pick up the hair stitches just under, only just under where I want the hat to meet the hair. So I'm going to pick up a couple of little stitches there. I'm going to do it one bit at a time. I'm not going to try to do anything in one sweeping motion, one stitch at a time. Then I'm going to go up through the middle of that purple top stitch. Pull it through. Down through the middle of the next one. Okay, and then again, I'm going to pick up a stitch just underneath and along a bit, along the line of where I position the hat with the pins. And once I've done that, I'll take that pin out. Go under the hair, give it a tug. And every time I'm making a stitch, I'm just double checking that it's sitting nicely along the hair and that the hair's not puckering or creating any strange bits that I don't like. Now, obviously, this isn't a detailed tutorial. It's just a quick showing of how I do this in this particular amigurumi and how it is a bit trial and error. So I'm going to keep on with this and I'll show you how it looks when I finish. So I've actually changed my mind. I went back again and I changed to purple yarn because I didn't like how it was looking with the yellow stitches coming through. And what I'm doing is, I'm, exactly as I showed you, I'm picking up just underneath the rim of the hat Picking up a couple of strands of the hair and then I'm going underneath my yellow slip stitch which is underneath and through the middle of that top purple stitch and back down through the middle of the next purple stitch and behind my yellow stitch and continuing like that and that has given me a really really nice finish the yellow's poking through underneath, you can't see the stitches, it's not puckering. And it's only taken me about 10 minutes up to this stage and I've already gone back to start again twice and it's really worth having a play about and working out what you like the look of best and don't be afraid to just unpick it slowly um, and go again. Can you hear whispering in the background? That's Dan and Phoebe making tea. <laughs> so there we are, it's all sewed on. It's not perfect in places, but it's handmade and perfection is overrated anyway. It's on and I'm now going to just tuck away the ends. I'm just probably going to go um, up and through the middle, pull it all the way through and then snip the end. Now what I would recommend if you were at a stage like, like I am now is I would leave a, ooh, <laughs> I would leave a really long tail because then you know exactly where your yarn end is. You haven't woven it in properly yet and you can still go back and grab it if you ever wanna just undo that and reposition. And I always do that with all of my things that I've sewn on, um, just in case I wanna reposition it right up to the last minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on his little arms now. Um, oh, Dan just said Lilia's getting up, so maybe I won't do that today. I'll have to save that for another day. <laughs> He's so cute. Ooh, I'm all pink in the face. So, at the bar. 
because I've just got out of the bath. Uh, I, yes, I've had my bath. So did you enjoy the amigurumi little glimpse into amigurumi? In my onesie. She's in her onesie. Uh, we're all ready. Everyone's had baths, showers, whatever they want. And we're all ready to have our dinner. I'm just heating up the um, made up casserole here and boiling up some new potatoes to go with it. So we need to do the song of the day and I was thinking about this when I was in the bath and I came up with the perfect one. As you know, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say as you know, cause you probably don't know, but back in Vlogmas, which was some time ago now, God, I'm so pink, I'm really warm. My bath was quite warm. I'm still pink from it. Um, I did song of the day, Christmas song of the day when I did Vlogmas and one of the songs was by Nat King Cole and I absolutely loved Nat King Cole's voice and I thought, we might go back to Nat King Cole and he's got, an, uh, well he's got quite a lot of very famous songs but one of my most favourite ones which I think is really apt for the time that we're in is Face the Music and Dance by Nat King Cole. So that is going to be the Spotify, on the Spotify playlist now. I forgot to add yesterday's one so I'll do, do that at the same time. I've probably forgotten to add a few, I apologise. Sometimes by the time I've done that, put the camera down, finished dinner, edited the vlog, I, there's always something I forget. So I will try to remember to add Delamitri from yesterday and Matt King Cole today. I've been reading through all your comments while I was in the bath as well, so that was really nice. I'm still not fully caught up, but I feel like we've just been having a really nice conversation, but you have no idea. <laughs> so I've been reading all your comments. There were a good few people who asked about the plaster that I mentioned this morning in White's Brown. So now I'm convinced that plaster must be a different colour in other countries, but I'm probably wrong. And there was two people who, on the birthday vlog for Dan from um, from Thursday, said um, that it's good to get plastered on your birthday. So well done to those two people. Uh, I think I think it was crafting at the kitchen table, or, and Jeanette. I think that those were the two people that said it. And apologies, apologies if I've got your names wrong, but I thought that was very funny. Okay, I'm going to go and finish the dinner and then we're going to all go and put our feet up and have a nice Saturday night watching the telly together and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye! Bye! I'm building a, a panda sanctuary in mine. A panda sanctuary? Yeah, do you want to see my Bye, panda Lilia. sanctuary side, Bye, Lilia! Bye, Dan! Bye! See you later!